What is a vulnerability management analyst? In this video, you're going to learn about the vulnerability management analyst career in cybersecurity. So you're going to learn about a general overview of the job. What do they actually do? Different types of job titles. So when you're searching out there for job boards, you'll be able to find something or at least hopefully be able to find something that matches your skill set as well as the different responsibilities for this particular job. What kind of salary you might be able to expect. Again, keep in mind, we're going to talk about base salary, not actual total compensation packets. So that can greatly vary based on the company that you're working for. You'll learn about some of the tools that might be used and also answer the age old question. Do I need certifications or a college education? So what is a vulnerability management analyst? So basically, this is a type of person that's going to be identifying, assessing, prioritizing, as well as doing management of vulnerabilities across the organization. So this might be on the networks, different host systems, different apps, etc. Really depends on the organization you work for. But in general, you'll touch all of those different areas. The whole goal with your job in this role is to try to manage those vulnerabilities to help reduce the risk to the organization of a successful cyber attack or some other type of incident. So what are some of the different job titles? And again, below this video, in the description, I'll list out a whole list of different job titles. You can go searching around for that. But some common ones might, might be vulnerability assessment analyst, remediation analyst, threat and vulnerability analyst, testing analyst, uh, detection analyst, and vulnerability analyst on the network. Now, I will say that most of the jobs you're going to see out there are probably going to be called either vulnerability management analyst or vulnerability assessment analyst. But again, it varies so much based on the organization, how they'll actually list in the job. So what do you do? Well, as the name implies, you'll be looking for vulnerabilities. So you'll be doing things like conducting vulnerability scans, using a variety of tools, things like Nessus or OpenVos, Qualys, etc. You're going to identify, analyze, and then prioritize those vulnerabilities based on things like severity, the likelihood that it's going to be exploited, as well as the potential impact to the organization. So as an example, you might work as a vulnerability management analyst. You might then see a news article about, oh, this critical vulnerability has come out. Life is going to end as we know it. But you know, based on the security controls and the layers of security that your particular organization has in place, that it's pretty unlikely that an attacker could successfully exploit that vulnerability and then have a significant impact on the organization. So this is where that prioritization comes in, and it really varies based on the company, the industry, et cetera, to where you really need to understand the bigger picture of the company and what's in place. In addition to that, you'll be involved in compliance. So because something is vulnerable, certain laws or regulations may have stipulations on what security controls need to be in place and what vulnerabilities can be there. So as an example, around security controls, PCI DSS might have specific controls that you have to maintain as an organization to be compliant. Now, there may be things like compensating controls where let's say, for example, that you need to have separation of duties, but you're a very small company, so you just don't have the resources to hire two separate people to handle that one particular task. In that case, you can use what's called a compensating control and use some type of other system or application to make up for that. So in that example of the separation of duties, you might have something where you add additional monitoring and you have audit trails and maybe you have some additional software in place that requires a couple of steps for the one person that's managing all of that. In addition, as a vulnerability management analyst, you'll also be communicating any results to different stakeholders. Oftentimes this might be teams like pen testing, uh, as if it's a separate team in the organization that you're working on. It may be your management, it could be executive leadership or senior leadership, especially uh, especially in the case of anything making the news. So typically, if there's something in the news, everyone gets worried about it. They want to know, like, how is this going to impact us? So you're going to be the person or you and your team are going to be the individuals that actually determine that and provide that communication to different stakeholders across the organization. What can you make? You know, is this a lucrative job? Well, here in the U.S., base salaries generally range from around mid-70s to a little over six figures. Again, depending on the organization you're with, a larger company might, may, might be closer to like 130, 140 in this role. In the U.K., 35 to 50,000 pounds. And in India, 600,000-ish um, rubies to 1.2 million rubies.
uh, rupees, excuse me. And so what are some of the tools that you may use in this particular role? As I mentioned, you're going to be doing vulnerability scanning. So using tools like Nessus, Qualys, OpenVos, et cetera. And again, that depends on the organization of what specific tools you're going to use. I would encourage you if you're looking at this video and you're and you're just now thinking about cybersecurity as a career path and determining that, hey, I, I like this vulnerability management analyst thing. I want to maybe pursue that. I encourage you to go find free versions of all these tools. In fact, like things like Metasploit and Map, those are free anyways. And just download them, play around with them, get familiar with them, understand at a high level of what they do and their purpose. And that way, when you go in for job interviews, you can actually talk the talk and say, yeah, I've, I've done some things with Nessus or I've done some things with OpenVos or Qualys or Metasploit or whatever. So some different tools are going to be those vulnerability scanners, pen testing tools like Metasploit, Nmap, password cracking tools, et cetera. Configura man configuration management tools, so things like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, SIM tools, tools that assess compliance, so basically GRC types of tools, and there's a variety of those out there. Threat Intel platforms, because you need to pull in threat data to understand what are the current threats, what are the likely threats, and then you'll better understand when you find a vulnerability, is this something that's likely to actually be exploited based on our industry, our company, and the security controls that we already have in place. And then also things like Emperor Protection, you'll usually be doing that to pull log data. So Carbon Black or eCentire has some XDR solutions. What about education? Do you need college degrees and certs and all that stuff? Again, for most of, these, most of these cybersecurity jobs, I say no, if you can show that you've got the skills and ambition. That being said, some companies require skills as kind of like a baseline barrier for people. So understand that sometimes certifications are used as, as like a barrier. So if you need to get certs or if you want to get a certification, I strongly recommend the CompTIA Security Plus simply because it gives you a nice broad perspective on a variety of cyber areas. Another one that many people seem to get is CEH or the Certified Ethical Hacker, just to kind of understand the attacker perspective. You've got OSCP, Pentest Plus along the same lines. And then as you get more experience, five years or more, CISSP is another search you can take a look at. Uh, there's also some additional pen testing related certs like uh, TCM Security has some that will help you understand an attacker point of view and, and really give the hands on with that as well. So key takeaways for this video, understand the vulnerability management analyst, as the name implies, one of the key responsibilities is managing vulnerabilities or helping to manage vulnerabilities across the organization with the overall goal to reduce that risk to the organization. You really need to identify what are those real threats to the organization. So again, leveraging threat intel data, leveraging things in the news of like what's actually being exploited, leveraging the actual vulnerabilities you're finding as well as CVEs that are being published out there using social media, using things like Reddit to determine like what are attackers out there actually doing. And then I want to stress that this, like many cyber roles, can have good compensation. Again, that definitely depends on the company you work for, but in most cases, you can earn a decent salary, a decent compensation package. And if you're not making a lot of money now, this can be a really good stepping stone to get your finances settled in a good way.